Good evening. Good evening. It's good to see you here. I've spent the, the evening here at YouTube and Facebook and Twitter looking at the testimony of people who have kept the faith in a universe that's larger than we can see that we can prove okay and i've been looking at the mennonites and the amish and the catholic people who are absolutely blown away by the heresy of the current pope right and the communities of the church of england who hold very tightly to the faith of the Benedictines and the Dominicans and um, the, the other communities who believe that Acts chapter one is the model that Jesus taught. What was the model that Jesus taught? What are you talking about? Okay, what are you talking about? The model that Jesus taught was that a group of people would come together and trust God to guide their collective future against an enemy, an empire, an ideology, a way of being that was mercenary. All right. Now, I remember a life that I lived, and this is the gift that God has given me to remember how things were a long time ago. I remember a life in which I wore a simple head covering and which I was focused on the meditation of the day and the prayers of the day, and I accepted the headship of my husband and I accepted the headship of the leadership of the community and I was part of a culture. I was part of a culture. And I sit through these videos of weddings and funerals in these wonderful Amish and Mennonite and Quaker and Hutterite and 12 tribes communities and I weep because it's all so familiar. But the problem is that human society has eclipsed and transcended the simple realities of survival and community. We are now dealing with stuff like distant electronic laser weapons and UFOs and ET cultures and, you know, all of the above galactic politics, okay, and who's on the moon, <laughs> okay, and are the people on the moon something like the ones in on Titan, okay, all right, we have to deal with a spiritual menagerie of different sorts of created souls, a menagerie. They're big, they're little, some of them are black, some of them are light up, lit up like a light bulb. Some are blue, some of them are little and yellow or green or yellow, red or, you know, we have to deal with our pets. Some of us have pets, dogs or cats or birds who are just as intelligent as we are. Oh my God, all right. I have a plant. <laughs> I have a plant who gives me orders. <laughs> all right. So life itself is confronting us with the question, is life what we want or is the robotic, automatic, Mecha mechanical function of machines going to replace us. 
Is that what we want to replace us? Is that how we want to retire and allow existence to be dominated by things? The things in our house, the things in our car, this, um, where did I put this? This cell phone, this goddamn thing that wants to control my behavior because it keeps ringing me and giving me lessons and advertisements and instructions what I need to do now. Is that what you need to do now? I don't think so. No. We, the humans, who have a divine will, spirit, spark, what do you, what do we call it? We do not need to be ordered around by technology. We do not need to be ordered around by policy, procedure, practice, all right, and rule baiting. We don't need it. We can, we can be who we are and not disturb anything and not disturb anybody, all right? I don't need to go out and shoot anybody. I don't need to go out and cheat anybody. I don't need to go out and defraud or harm anybody. Do you? I don't think so. I don't think so. We don't need to do harm. Now, we have an administration that's cut in two. There's our president who's trying very hard to get the nation operating again economically and to put down and put away the human soul trafficking, child sex trafficking, human trafficking, drug trafficking, gun trafficking, a proxy war trafficking that's going on by the Luciferian ideology. Okay, now what's the Luciferian? The Luciferian ideology is the belief that people who actually, okay, I'll have to admit to you, we, the people of the circle of seas around which the ice wall gives us a boundary, we are little, we are little bitty. We are the slaves, we are the gold miners, we are the children of the um, Ajiji, the Anunnaki genetic alteration, we are the ones who do the work and we are the ones whom the powers that believe cannot administer ourselves and govern ourselves. And so we need to be jerked around and told what to do. And I'm here to say to you, that's bullshit. We in the circle of the lake of oceans can in fact set up our own hierarchical system and we can decide who is competent at what level of function and we can decide who can be trusted and who cannot be trusted and we can decide who can progress and who needs to stay and they want to stay at a more primitive level of existence, okay, like the ancient cultures. There's nothing wrong with the indigenous, indigenous cultures. They had their own experience. Why can't we let them have their own experience if they weren't bothering anybody? Now, there is a contrived religion that was assembled and created by the Jesuit part of the Vatican called Islam. And Islam is not a live and let live culture. Islam has behaviors called takia, which is double dealing, jizya, which is setting up a protection racket, 
and jihad, which is conquest, that bothers other people, that doesn't allow live and let live, that doesn't allow people to be themselves, all right? And we have to at least confront it, the fact that it's built on an ethic, on a group of methods that are ruthless and cruel. We just simply have to say, no, we don't want that here. We don't want that here, and we don't want that here, and we don't want that here, all right? And in saying that, we're not harming anybody. We're just setting our own limits and boundaries. And setting our own limits and boundaries is what we as adults, as adult humans, need to be able to do, duh. Can you set your own limits and boundaries? Can you say, no, your culture cannot tell me how I have to live? Your culture cannot tell me how I have to dress. Your culture cannot tell me where my activities have to be confined because I don't harm anybody, all right? If I'm not harming anybody, go mind your own business, all right? And so the essence of our observation, observing, what's going on in our world is that we have to be able to be intelligent enough to know when to say no and when to say okay and when to trust and when to not trust and when to believe and when the belief, okay, you believe whatever you want. I, I don't care you want to believe that the moon is is people by little green men or that, you know, that, that there's an Easter bunny and a Santa Claus. Okay, I don't care what you believe, but don't tell me what to believe. I have my own experience. And so what I'm realizing is that in spite of the deep state's attempts to censor the internet, to make real experiences unavailable, that spark innovation, that spark our will to live according to our own limits and boundaries, I am able to find on the social media, all kinds of videos from people who have experience that I've never seen before. And that makes me happy or makes me sad or I cry about. I've been watching weddings and I've been watching um, the commercial stuff and I've been watching meteorological stuff and I've been watching you know, all kinds of stuff. And it's not political, and that's okay. It doesn't need to be political for us to know that the knowledge that the official officials in power, in governance, give me ain't real, honey. And what the amateur, <laughs> the amateurs, on YouTube and amateurs on Twitter and the amateurs here and there provide just because they can <laughs> has meaning, has meaning. There's meaning in the internet that we can adopt and that we can embrace that can be real. And the more we hear about the defaults and the screw ups of the mainstream media, the more we can laugh at it. Like, all right, you guys at ABC, NBC, CBS, and all of that, you know, you're just gaming us, honey. You're just gaming us. It's not impossible. It's not terrible. We can do it. We can handle it. So we must handle the 
insurrection, insubordination, and sedition of the doctrine error leftist ideologies that tell us we're stupid and they're going to show us how to replace what we've always known was correct and decent and law-abiding with more chaos and, and more uproar and more fury. I'm not buying it, are you? I hope not. I hope not. We don't need to buy in any more fury or any more hatred, okay? I don't care what you look like, okay? Maybe you don't care what I look like. Let's just get along, all right? And let's take these ideologies one by one by one and ask them to define the behavior that they think is going to actually work out for everybody. And you will put them on the spot, baby. You'll put them on the spot. And they won't know what to say. And um, then what you do is you send them over to Jordan Peterson. And you say, let Jordan Peterson talk to you about what's toxic versus what is real and honest and true and decent. And we're going to sort this out. I believe it. I hope you believe it too. See ya.